Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles AFC Daily with me, Harry Simiu. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like, hit the subscribe button and that little bell icon too so you never miss an upload. If you're listening via audio, welcome um, and don't forget to hit subscribe on whichever platform it is that you prefer to listen to us from and of course, leave us a review. Those are very, very important too. Arsenal are set to complete the signing of Brazilian star Gabriel Martinelli in the coming days. Uh, it's being widely reported that Arsenal uh, have got this deal sorted. It's in the bag and it looks as though he's going to sign a five-year deal at the Emirates. Martinelli currently plays for Brazilian side Ituano but has previously had trials at the likes of Manchester United and Barcelona. According to Globo Esporte, they are saying that Arsenal have won the race to sign Gabriel Martinelli and that it is a done deal. Now, the young Brazilian scored 10 goals and got six assists in 31 outings last season and uh, has continued to track interest from far and wide right up until the last minute. Now, I want to be clear on this. The reports are saying that this negotiation and this deal has absolutely nothing to do with Edu, despite the two being Brazilian this is something that Arsenal have been looking at doing long before Unai Emery came in and long before Edu was even mentioned uh, as taking over as technical director. It looks as though the fee is going to be around about £6 million, which is not very much in the modern game. Uh, so, you know, it's, it feels like it's worth the risk on this one. Uh, but to a club like Ituano, that is a, a huge amount of money. And I'll, you know, this is a deal that I'm assuming suits all parties. Arsenal, the player... And, of course, the club, um, you know, with Danny Welbeck having gone recently, uh, I think it was uh, it was right that we got another striker in. How long it will be before Martinelli is ready to have any impact in the first team, though, I'm not entirely sure. But a positive signing. It looks as though Arsenal are building for the future. And uh, I'm interested to see what this uh, young Brazilian will bring to the table in the coming seasons. According to Team Talk, Southampton left-back Matt Target is a target, yep, excuse the pun, for Arsenal uh, this summer. Not sure about this one. It's not a rumour that I've heard much this summer, to be honest. It's probably the first time I've come across it, actually, and unless I'm completely having a, a brain freeze moment and I've forgotten. But Matt Target mm, couldn't even get in the Southampton side last season for the most part. And I know that the situation at Arsenal... Um, with the left backs is one that probably needs addressing. Uh, Nacho Monreal is coming towards the end of his career and Ser Kolasinac for me was very hit and miss towards the end of the season. But Matt Target, not entirely sure about that one. Not sure if I'd bother with him to be fair. Uh, he is seemingly available though, uh, deemed surplus to requirements at Southampton for the most part of last season as I've said and you know you could imagine that he wouldn't be demanding a huge uh, wage packet like certain other options would so uh, I don't know be interesting to see on this one for me it's a no-go but um, you know we don't know what budget Arsenal are working with we don't know uh, who is available out there so uh, I wouldn't dismiss this rumor completely just yet but this is the first time I've heard it I've got to be honest Matt Target would you have him at Arsenal let me know in the comments uh, below uh, and uh, yeah let's uh, swiftly move on it was officially announced yesterday that Freddy Lundberg will be taking up a role as assistant coach of the first team uh, with Steve Bowles replacing him. We knew this was happening for quite some time. So the announcement came as no surprise. Uh, but what does this announcement mean? What does this appointment mean for the future of Arsenal Football Club? Well, to me, it's pretty obvious. It means that Arsenal will be putting uh, a greater focus on the transition of young players into the first team. It feels like, uh, you know, that's the route Arsenal want to go down. It feels like we're not going to be able to compete financially. Um, so that's the way to go. And, you know, if that's the the, the uh, preferred route for Arsenal Football Club, then who better to manage that transition between the under-23s and, and, you know, those players when they do step up, then Freddie Lundberg, who's been their mentor for a little while now. I think it's a good move. I think it's a smart move. And, you know, this may be uh, a little bit out there and you may think like I'm talking absolute nonsense. But for me, I just get this feeling and it's nothing more than that. Just a feeling that Arsenal are lining up Freddie Lundberg for the big job someday. 
that Arsenal have been so impressed with the way he's handled the under-23s that this is just a step in him eventually taking over as the club's manager. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments section below. Always interested to hear what you guys think. Now, that does mean, of course, that Steve Bold will be going and taking over the under-23s. And Steve Bold is no stranger to youth football. He's done that sort of role before successfully as well, it has to be said. Um, but I, I just want to defend Steve Bold a little bit here because for the entire season, you know, the general consensus among Arsenal fans is this when when Steve Bold is, is brought into the conversation. What on earth does Steve Bold do? We're so bad defensively. Steve Bold was a great defender. What on earth is he doing? Well, I just want to put this rumour and this myth to bed because it's been made abundantly clear on numerous occasions by the club that Steve Bold is not responsible for the defensive shape of this football team. When are people going to get that into their heads? Steve Bold has nothing to do with Arsenal's defence. That's not his role. It never has been his role. From the day he joined the first team, he was never given free reign and the responsibility of coaching Arsenal's defence. Steve Bold's role has been described on numerous occasions as being a broader coaching role. He's not a defensive coach. He never has been. So if you're sitting there going, oh, what's Steve Bold doing? What is he doing? Blah, blah, blah. Why is our defence so bad? Then you're, bl you're placing the blame on the wrong person because that's not Steve Bold's job. In fact, Juan Carlos Carcedo, Unai Emery's number two, or, you know, assistant that he takes everywhere he goes with him, has been tasked with dealing with the defence. That is more his remit than it is Steve Bold's. I'm not saying Carcedo is solely responsible for that element of the team, but he's more responsible for it than Steve Bold. So to sit there and say our defence is bad, it's Steve Bold's fault, fault, sack him. It's just naive, it's stupid, it's misinformed. And I wish people would stop getting on his back because at the end of the day, Steve Bold is an Arsenal great. He was a fantastic defender. And if you for a second think that Arsenal's defensive flaws are down to him, then I'm sorry, but you're living in cuckoo land. Maybe if Steve Bold did have his way, maybe if he did have free reign over the defence and the um, you know, the responsibility to go on and, and in, embed certain beliefs that he has, we would see a much stronger Arsenal defence. But right now, that's not his responsibility. And if it was his responsibility, would he be being swapped with Freddie Lundberg? Hardly a defensive genius, is he? So think about that as well. The next time you sit there and, uh, you know, jump on social media and start slating Steve Bold. He is not responsible for that defence. He never has been. The defensive problems run a lot deeper than Steve Bold. Um, and uh, the sooner people realise that, the better. That brings me to the end of another edition of the Chronicles AFC Daily. Thank you once again for tuning in. Don't forget, subscribe, like, share, etc, etc. You know the drill by now. We'll be back tomorrow with another edition. And our fans phone-in returns this week, Thursday night, 9pm UK time. If you're interested, all you need to do is DM us at Chronicles underscore AFC on Twitter with your name and contact telephone number if you you will be uh, talking to us from abroad. We need a Skype address instead and we'll get through as many of your calls as we possibly can. Last time we ran well over schedule, uh, but that's absolutely fine. I'm happy to take the calls and get through as many as we possibly can. Uh, so we'll be back tomorrow. And until then, guys, take care of yourselves. And uh, to quote Jerry Springer, and each other. <laughs>